Good afternoon, everybody. Um, certainly uh, disappointed that I got to come in here and talk about uh, uh, a loss on Saturday. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm at a loss. Our, our guys seem ready and uh, and certainly excited to play. And uh, unfortunately, we 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 didn't play as well as I hoped we would, uh, or as well as I think we could. Um, offensively to, to have the ball down in the red zone, to have the ball in the goal line, first and goal a couple of times and come away with nothing, uh, be forced to kick a field goal. Uh, the turnovers were just, they're unforgivable. And uh, we've certainly got to do a better job of, of, of coaching our guys to, to uh, be more, to be more, uh, careful with the ball and to value it more. Um, and, and we, we can help our guys. We work on ball security quite a bit. Um, but you know, the, the throws obviously, um, uh, for the, the two interceptions and then the, uh, the sack fumble had as much to do with, with the protection breaking down from the backside as it did, uh, you know, us maybe not throwing the ball away quicker and the, the, the internal clock that quarterbacks have, He's got it too, and uh, I'm not sure the the uh, alarm was going off yet when he got hit in the back. But uh, we had two other fumbles. One we lost uh, veteran players who have been through our ball security circuit. Uh, uh, pretty much every day they've been a player here. Um, you know, we we've got to we just got to be de more demanding of that, and and uh, and hopefully those mistakes won't happen again. But those certainly cost us and uh and the, the just the inability to be able to run the football like we have in the past and uh that's a team we beat by uh, well we scored 48 points a year ago against them and scored six on offense this year so i don't think we're 42 points uh worse as an offense but you know you compare scores it kind of looks like that but i i'm I'm still very excited about what we're doing and we've obviously got to do it better. We got to do play better up front, block better up front. We got to take care of the ball. We got to be more effective and more efficient with distributing the ball um, and doing that without turning the ball over. Um, and so we're going to, we're going to get back to work and hopefully do that better this week against Delaware state. I thought our defense played really, really well until uh, some breakdowns at the end. There's a couple of big plays, uh, one for a touchdown, uh, one that created an opportunity opportunity for them to score a touchdown. And uh, and those happen in the last six minutes of the game. So certainly it's agonizing for, for all of us, everybody on our team, for me personally, I know for everybody that cares about Army football, it's agonizing to watch uh, blowing a 10-point lead with under six minutes to go. But that's just the reality of it. it happened and we got to do something about it and and we will our guys will respond they're not you know they're not pointing the fingers and reacting and and uh you know turning it into uh, an us versus them it's it's all of us it's our entire football team so we've got to play better and coach better and and we're going to work to do all those things this week and and we're excited to be coming home uh to to play here in Mikey Stadium it's it's uh, it's been a place where we've had a good a good bit of success um, over the last several years, and and we got we need that to continue. We need a victory in uh, in a worse way. So hopefully we'll play well enough to earn the victory this weekend. Rich, kick things off. Hey Jeff, Rich Marco, Army Radio Network. Your teams historically have bounced back very well from setbacks. Why is that? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a, maybe sometimes it's a wake up call. Um, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a, a determination that our players have that they just don't want to, they don't want to experience that, uh, that, that feeling of regret that, that, uh, that feeling of disappointment again, but, and you know, we've, we've had some times here where, We've done a really good job of bouncing back. There's been times too where where we haven't. You know, we've had some stretches here, Rich, and think of 2019 game, and it was one disappointment after another. And we lost, I think, five in a row. 
and uh, certainly don't want to get into that rut. And last year we had a really tough start, and uh, and then we finished a lot stronger. But um, there, there's there there needs to be a resiliency in our team. Uh, I think our guys possess that. It's it's just kind of the the lives they lead here, the the challenges that they're faced with. I think it it lends um, it lends itself to be in a an environment where you have to be resilient, and uh, and so hopefully our guys are resilient and they'll come back with a positive attitude today and all this week and and uh, certainly on Saturday. Jeff Delaware State, and you've you know historically played teams out of the FCS. You know you coached the FCS, so you know and respect the level of play. If you could just um, let us know how you know you handle a team that maybe you don't know a ton about, you don't know a ton of common opponents. How you approach that as a team? The thing is, is we don't know a lot about them, and and it's hard to, um, it's really hard to evaluate sometimes when you don't have common opponents or or play teams that are on the same level, even even past film from from seasons before. Uh, this game isn't about them. This game this Saturday is about us and trying to play better and improving as a football team, improving as an offense, improving as a defense, playing better special teams, coaching better. Um, we've got to do those things better so that we can hope to move forward and improve as a football team. And that's all I'm concerned with. That's all I'm concerned with every week is that we continue to improve and get better and try to maximize who we can be. Uh, I certainly give credit to ULM. They they did a great job against us on on Saturday night. The um, their defense, the way their defense played, was outstanding. They had a very good plan, well coached. Um, offensively, they 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 really struggled to move the ball against us through most of the game, but had the resiliency to to find a way to score in the late part of the game when they needed to, and they won the football game. So credit to them. Um, and uh, it, they made a lot of plays and uh, and made it difficult on us. But I certainly think there were opportunities for us and things that we need to do better and could have done better, are capable of doing better, that we didn't do, that may have positioned us to win the football game. And uh, I'm, despite the loss, I mean, it, that that that's a disappointment in itself. I'm disappointed in the way we played the way we played fundamentally, um, the execution of assignments at times. Those are the things that we need to improve on. So that's what this Saturday is about. This week of preparation is about to try to get better uh, in that regard. But we we really don't know enough about them. After one game, they play one game um, with with some new coaches, what we're really going to see on Saturday. Thanks, Coach. And go ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> Ken McMillan with the Times Herald Record. Uh, Jeff, other than the two picks, how would you rate Bryson's first effort out there? I thought he played really hard. Um, he ran the ball hard. He broke some tackles. Um, the 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 two interceptions were just very poorly thrown and and not great decisions. He knows that. Um, this is a guy that doesn't have a lot of experience, so he's there's going to be some growing pains. Um, he had another throw down in the red zone that was an incomplete pass, an incomplete pass that they batted down, which is well, almost an identical throw to the last interception of the game on our sideline. That uh, there was a player on top and a player underneath of a single receiver into the boundary, and and uh, and th those were those were disappointing. But I thought he he did a really nice job in the opening drive of 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 finding Caleb Fortner. Um, or Liam Fortner, excuse me, final Liam. I do that all the time, the twin brothers on our team. Uh, final Liam Fortner, who did a re really good job of creating a window for himself. It was a scramble play and stayed active, and and Bryson found him. Uh, but he did a good job with that. There were uh, there were several plays in the game that I thought Bryson uh, okay. did a good job with our with our offense. I Mistakes were were the the turnovers and uh, and just the poor decisions and he'll get better. Um, he's he's I, I believe he's being well coached. 
I think Coach Worley does a really good job with the quarterbacks and Coach Thatcher creating plays for him and uh, that fit his skill set. Um, and he'll improve. And like I said, hadn't had a lot of experience, and we knew there'd be some growing pains. Just unfortunate we had to had to suffer, uh, you know, the uh, the loss on Saturday to learn some of our our mistakes and our errors. We I still believe you can learn the same things from a from a victory. We wouldn't be sitting here feeling like we played great uh, had we managed to find a way to win that game in the fourth quarter. But there'd be lots of things to fix. But it it feel a lot better. Jeff, can you elaborate on the defense? Obviously, as you said, for 54 minutes, really held them in check. A couple mistakes, and it's, you know, just past you. But what do you think about the overall defense effort? I thought the defense played really well. Um, did a good job breaking up some passes on the back end. Um, stopped the run uh, for the most part the entire game. And it wasn't until those last six minutes where they broke out a couple of big runs and it was costly, but, but that's football. And if you got to make those plays, you got to make those plays every time. Big plays can be extremely costly on defense. You can play an entire game on offense and not have a single big play and still win the game. And we've done that plenty of times here. Just grind it out three and four yards at a time. Uh, nothing sexy about it. Uh, but we managed to win the game. We control the clock and and score on those drives um, without a big play. Um, defensively, you, one big play, a couple of big plays can that can turn a game around. And that's what happened in the fourth quarter. And wasn't that our guys weren't trying? Um, one of those big plays, the second one, we missed a tackle um, on uh, on one of those. We weren't fit where we needed to be on the run and the gaps where we were supposed to be and um, two big plays. And uh, so, unfortunately, we paid the ultimate price for those for those big plays in a run game. Also, offense, we saw a lot of good work from Miles Stewart and Hayden Reed. Both of those guys are are really good runners, and uh, and I'm I'm excited about what they did on Saturday night. We've we you know Hayden was a guy a year ago that really played a good bit and we were excited about and, and felt really good about as a, as a runner and the future he's got with our program. Miles, <clears throat> pardon me, was playing slot back in the, uh, in the under center option. And, and I think this offense really fits him better than the previous offense, just his skill set, his ability to run the football. Um, we're going to try to get those guys the ball. And we've got a couple other good runners in Jacoby Buchanan and Tyson Riley. And I think Kanye Udo is, is going to have a really good career here as a running back and Markel Johnson and um, you know, Tyrell Robinson gets healthy. There's going to be some guys there that we're going to want to have carrying the football. And um, so there's not enough footballs to go around. There's one. So we got to find the guys that fit in in the particular place that we're calling or the situation and, and get them in the game. But I was happy with those two guys and the way they ran the football. So hopefully they'll continue to improve and, and we'll get more more mileage out of them. And then just one more here. Can you talk about Brady Small's you know, performance of positive changes in the entire game? And was there any other players in the team who kind of stood out that we should know about? I, I was really... I was really proud of Brady. That's not easy to start your first college football. The first college football game he's playing in his career, and he's a starting center. That's not easy. Um, he, he did some good things. He had some he had some errors. He had some critical errors. Um, you know, the one, uh, you know, the, the, the first fumble down there, the sack. That's a that's a that was a protection breakdown. And and he was responsible for that guy. And Again, he's a freshman. He's going to make some mistakes. Um, I wasn't particularly pleased uh, with the way we played up front. I think we can play better up front, and that's where it starts. And if if um, those veteran players we have up there will improve this week and and uh, and control the line of scrimmage better, I think we'll have a better outcome this week. Um, but it wasn't just Brady. It wasn't just the offensive line. There were 
there were lots of problems. Um, and we got to get better as an offense. We can't score six points and hope to win any games. Not this week, not last week, not any week. So unless that improves and we're more productive and we do capitalize on those opportunities where we get the ball in the red zone uh, four times and come away with six points, you know, that's 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 the way we play football here. So we get it down there, we get it close, we we hammer it in there. We got to find a way to do that. So we'll we'll try to do better on that this week. Any other players that might have stood out? Um, there's certainly some guys on defense. I thought Jimmy Charlo played a really good game on defense. Uh, really, really uh, did a great job tackling and his leadership and just the way he's improved over the course of his career. Um, I've been really pleased with. I thought. Cam Jones made a really good play on that long ball uh, there late in the game and uh, and knocked that ball down. I thought that was a good play. Um, it was uh, it was good to see uh, Isaiah get some touches and and uh, and get the ball in his hands. He had the one drop uh, that was a high ball there in the fourth quarter, and uh, but I'm excited about him and how this offense is hopefully going to give him some chances to get some more touches and. There's, uh, you know, you mentioned Miles and and Hayden and the way they ran the football. Um, defensively, we played a pretty stout football game for 54 minutes of the game, as you said. So there's several guys on defense that I thought played good football games and uh, and just playing blocks, shedding blocks, getting in the backfield. Veteran players like Frey and Richardson, um, you know, those guys are. You you hope they'll show up in games and uh, and they need to and and they did on Saturday and uh, guys like Leo Lowen and Jabari Moore and Q Hammonds and those guys they need to show up in games and uh, and they will and we'll 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 work to correct those mistakes that happen late in the game hopefully we'll, they won't happen again. Charles, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Coach Charles Peters with GoBlackKnights.com. Obviously, you're frustrated with the lack of production and, and hence turnovers from, you know, the quarterback position, Bryson Daly. And although it was just game number one, is there any chance that you will be utilizing more than one quarterback this Saturday, hence Dwayne Coleman getting early game reps? I don't know that that's part of our plan right now. Um, I, I've forever thought that if you could settle in on one quarterback, I think it's an advantage to do that and not have to rotate quarterbacks. It's just a different position. Um, but certainly <clears throat> we've got some good talented young guys that we want to get ready. And whether it's Dwayne or Larry Robinson or Champ Harris or who it may be, uh, those guys are getting reps in practice and we want to have them prepared. And, uh, and I'd like to get those guys some opportunities to play. That's how they get better. Uh, it's like every position there's, our defensive line I, I think there's I don't know seven or eight guys that played significant snaps for three positions on Saturday night and those are guys who are getting getting some reps and and getting better guys like Andre Miller who haven't played a whole lot he had to play some snaps on Saturday night he's going to improve because of that um the Hayden Reed and Miles Stewart getting a chance to catch the ball Liam Fortner going out there and making a catch and and playing in the game and those are great opportunities for guys to improve different than uh, the experience in practice. So getting a quarterback, uh, a second quarterback opportunities to do that would be valuable. But right now we want to, we want to try to position our offense to have success, certainly running the football and, and then throwing the football when we need to. And, uh, and so if we, if we feel Bryson gives us the best chance to do that, then he'll continue to be the quarterback. And if, we feel like somebody else gives us a better chance to do that, then we'll play them. And uh, but I I don't foresee a a two quarterback system where we're rolling guys in and out. I think we figure out who's going to be the best leader and the and distribute the ball most efficiently, and that's going to be the guy. He, Bryson carried the ball a lot on Saturday night, and you know as we look at, and he did a good job. I think he broke eight tackles, uh, but. We got to get some of those carries to some other guys too, and uh, and not put it all on him. And so he's built differently than the other quarterbacks. Dwayne and and those freshman quarterbacks are just different body types than Bryson, and and so you know that again 
depending on who the quarterback is, may may mean we distribute the ball differently. And yeah, that that leads into my next question because distribution of the ball, Daly did carry the ball 23 times for 79 yards uh, with the combination of Marshall, Reed, Stewart, Buchanan, Rally collectively 25 times. Uh, from an offensive perspective, is that the type of distribution you anticipate from the offense, or is it dependent on the quarterback being able to read and hence making the decision to either run the ball or hand it off himself? Some of those carries were were read plays where certainly somebody else could have carried the ball or he could have pitched the ball. He got the ball in the perimeter and could have pitched the ball to uh, one of our one of our running backs. And it just the way that they def defended us, uh, we didn't get the ball pitched. We didn't get it. We got it out there, but they they took the pitch away and, and forced Bryson to run the football. So you know, we had that conversation on Sunday just about the distribution and who carried the ball and and who we want to have carrying the ball more than anybody else on the team or where, where we want those carries distributed. So uh, certainly we didn't know how they would defend us. Um, and there's plenty of option plays in the, in the, in the system. So when a team runs the option as we have here, uh, some of it is dictated by the defense. And so if we want other people to carry the ball, then we have to have des designed runs for them to do that. And, uh, and, and we had some, obviously we had some where we had uh, tosses to the perimeter and handoffs that uh, were sweet plays or, or handoffs to the guys in, inside the box. Uh, but certainly we want to distribute that more, more through the running backs than we did. Uh, that doesn't mean we're opposed to having the quarterback carry it, but I think we, we've, we've got these running backs and we want to use them and it's, it's finding ways with the way people are defending us to be able to get them to carry the ball. And, and uh, we've had, we've had the same conversation and we have the same desire. Okay, my, my final follow-up question is this. I know it might sound somewhat simplified, but based on taking an itemized look at the game itself, meaning Saturday's game, what lessons can be learned and taken away from that loss as you go into uh, this Saturday's game against Delaware state? Oh, certainly the, the, uh, the, the need to be more efficient in the red zone and on the goal line. And, uh, and that's something that we've prided ourselves on here. And with a change in the offensive system, we're doing things differently. We have different plays, different play calls. Um, but it, it doesn't change our belief that when we get it down there, we've got to find a way to get it in. Um, we're not still not, uh, a uh, fast tempo team and you know, we're not huddling, but our pace is still very similar to what it was in the past. And that's to try to control the clock and, and, and maintain possession and, and be a tough hard nosed run team that when we get the ball down in the goal line, we can smash it in there. And so we got to figure out ways to do that better. That's certainly a lesson from Saturday night. Um, you know, our, our, our short yardage, we got into short yardage at times, whether it was on the goal line or in, in the middle of the field. And we've got to be able to move the sticks. And uh, and so we've got to do that better. And so spending the time that's necessary to do those things in the red zone, on the goal line, in short yardage situations has got to be an emphasis for us. Um, and then defensively, uh, again, just the, the, the certainty that we're going to have people position where they need to be uh, to play good run defense. Uh, you got to cover receivers. Yes, that's part of it, but it, it starts with those front seven and taking the gaps away and then playing blocks and getting off of blocks. And so there's a lot of things, a lot of things you learn. And uh, uh, it, what a, what a loss like that does is it, it completely humbles us and forces us to look uh, again, in, in very minute, a minute detail at everything we're doing, what we're drilling, what what we're doing scheme wise, how we're coaching the fundamentals and those schemes. Um, so those are those are all things that we've got to we've got to really look at hard and, and do a better job with. Um, you know, the the one fourth and one I said after the game, I was going to fake the punt there on fourth and one, and wisely they kept their their defense out on the field and 
we've got a call that that takes the the uh, the fake off. But certainly that's a you know that's one I'd like to go back and just call timeout and go for it on fourth and one to lose a possession there is not something I wanted to do. Um, but so I've got to do a better job with those decisions and the things that I'm responsible for. So, you know, it's, it's, it's everybody, it's everybody on our team. It's everybody in the room. And that's, that's, uh, that's the thing about this game. Uh, we all got to play together. We all got to do our job and, and one critical error can, can cost a football game and, in a close game like that, in a close finish like that, we we needed to make decisions that were better and and uh, execute fundamentals and assignments that that uh, that we didn't. And when we do that, I think we'll have a much better chance to win. And I think we got a tough football team, and I think we will have a chance to win some games if we'll do that. A couple more, hey. Sal. Go ahead. Hey, coach. Good afternoon. Um, when you go back and looked at the tape from Louisiana Monroe, um, it, has your take changed on the Howell catch in the end zone? Did you think that he had it or he didn't have it? Well, I, I'm not. I'm not at liberty to say. I I could say what I think, but then they would find me, so uh, or I'd get a reprimand for giving my opinion. So I I, you know what. They got officials. They officiate the game. They got a replay official. He looks at it. He makes his determination. Perhaps maybe they didn't have the same uh, video evidence that we had. Um, you know, they didn't show many plays of it from the scoreboard, but they showed one as they were making the announcement that I thought was pretty compelling evidence. But you know, it is what it is. And here's the deal on that: you got to win by enough and you got to make the game uh, lopsided enough that the officials don't matter. It's not their, it, it, it's not their responsibility for us to win the game. It's our responsibility to win the game. And we didn't do enough to separate ourselves from ULM that that didn't matter. You know, if we just scored all four times in the red zone and scored 28 points, then that wouldn't have mattered. They could score that touchdown and, you know, everybody would be saying, well, I think he caught it and it was in, or I didn't think he would caught it and he was out or whatever. It wouldn't matter. We would have won. And so you know, the frustrating thing is, is you want every single call to be right. You want everything to, to happen just like it's supposed to. And, and, you know, if this, if this wouldn't have happened, if, if that call wouldn't have been made, if this block would have, taking place it's if dog rabbit as my grandmother used to say what we needed to do was win the game and control the game enough that none of the other stuff matters and and we didn't do that so that's our responsibility what do you think did, did you get a look at it a, a, a good look at it from yeah I, I thought it wasn't a touchdown but that's you thought it was i wasn't it was not a touchdown yeah um, yeah yeah, I wish you. Um, just, I wish you were the replay official. Maybe I'll check in that as a career coach. I, I have one more for you. Um, I know that the scheme. I mean, I know your your philosophy is to establish a run and run the football. But can in this offense, can the pass actually open up things for the run? Um, down the road, you think or? Sure, I think I think I think there's uh, that that's the thing about the scheme. I think it it plays together. The you know, having the ability to throw the ball should. Uh, if we can, we prove that we can do that should take people out of the box, uh, but also being able to run the ball effectively in a lighter box may force people back into the box and open up the throws. So it's um, for most people's offenses, that's kind of the way it's designed. And, and for ours, this scheme, it, it is too. So um, we'll just see what's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, just how we progress and, that's the first game against a live opponent with this scheme, and it didn't go like I hoped it would. But that doesn't mean it's a bad scheme or we got bad players. You know, we, we've got to coach our guys to be able to perform their assignment and fundamentals more effectively. And they've got a responsibility to perform their assignments and fundamentals more effectively. So it's it's everybody. And I think when we do that, then we're going to be better. But, you know, 
it, it, it's change. It's different. And we experienced some growing pains on Saturday, uh, some pains I would rather not experience, but we are. Uh, but nobody's panicking. We got to get better at what we're doing. If we if we blocked like that or or fumbled the ball like that or made poor decisions like we did in the old scheme, we would won, we would have lost that game Saturday night too. No matter what we were running, and we just we got to we got to perform better. The bottom line is the guys that go on the field, they are the players, and they have to make the plays, and the coaches have to prepare and position them to make those plays. So there's you know there's just responsibility uh, on all of us to do our jobs better. Ken, go ahead. Ken Kreitzer. Hey, coach. Good afternoon. Uh, maybe uh, one big picture question for you. Uh, conference realignment's been going all over the place right uh, this year for college football, and the American Conference has got an opening. Um, there's been conjecture about Army. Uh, do you have a preference in staying independent or, or would you like to eventually join a conference? I, I've talked about that before. I think with conference conference realignment and um, it just the changing landscape of college football, we have we have very much uh, embraced and valued our independency. I think it's been you know, just a it's great for this university for this program to have national exposure like we have. But as I've said many times that there may come a time where we don't have a choice that, that the best decision for this institution and this, this program may to be, may, may be to join a conference. That time may be now. I don't know. That's not, that, that's not for me to decide that that's a, that's a decision that's for the university um, and the future of this, this institution and the program. It's not, it's not a Jeff Munkin decision. Uh, you know, I can have an opinion and I, I value our independency. I think it's fantastic to be able to play people all over the country, but I also see the changing landscape of college football and the, the realignment of conferences and the value of aligning our program with a conference. So, you know, there's, I think there's in the changing world we're in that it's something that we've got to consider and look at look at strongly so uh, i'm gonna leave those decisions up to the, to the folks that need to make those decisions it's not it's not a decision that i need to make thanks coach good to see you today you too ken last one and then we'll have to wrap up joe from underdog go ahead hey coach uh you mentioned the uh the fortner twins uh earlier in the, in the press conference obviously unique situation there with them being Twin brothers, is that a first for you? And if so, how do you kind of go about that, or what's what are some of the nuances there? Oh, we have the G, the the Giovanelli twins when I first got here, um, and we had uh, let's see, if we had any other twins in the program. This might be the second set. We've had other we've had other brothers, um, but you know, both of these guys are they're they're really doing a great job at their respective positions. Caleb played a lot at linebacker. Liam played a bunch at uh, at, at wide receiver. They're both playing on special teams, uh, and two just hard nosed, blue collar type kids. Guys we like around here. Guys I really like to coach. They're, they got just an incredible personality and and temperament, and they're they're team guys. Uh, really nice young men, smart, uh, but but they are workers. They're tough and. You go in a weight room, they're giving it everything they got. You go out to practice field, they're giving it everything they got. Um, so two, two great kids. I'm glad they're on our team. Awesome. Thanks.